second video in uh, whatever this bebop scale series is that I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the dominant bebop scale and the Phrygian dominant bebop scale. The uh, dominant bebop scale, I'll do it on G, is going to be uh, like G mixolydian with a natural seventh. And in that scale you have your chord tones, which will be the root, third, fifth, and flat seventh. Um, so just like we did with the major bebop scale, you want to practice descending lines from each of those notes. So here's the root, the third, fifth, and the flat seventh. Um, and then uh, you have your non-chord tones as well. So uh, kind of the same rules that I uh, mentioned with the major bebop scale. Uh, you add extra chromaticism or you could take out chromaticism from the scale if you prefer the sound of that. Um, so going from the ninth, what I prefer to do is add in a passing tone going to the root. From the fourth, I usually do an enclosure to the third, and then down the scale from there. Um, and then from the sixth, again, chromatic approach from above into the fifth. Uh, and then you have your non-scale tones, which will be the flat nine, sharp nine, uh, the flat five, flat six, or the flat thirteenth, and the natural seventh. So here's the flat nine. Usually just do an enclosure to the root. Uh, here's the sharp nine. So usually I do uh, an enclosure to the nine and then resolve the nine to the root. Here's the uh, flat five or the sharp 11. Uh, usually I just go to the uh, third from there. Sometimes I'll just go straight from the um, sharp 11 to the third, but only sometimes. Uh, then the flat six, just an enclosure to the fifth, and the natural seventh, just an enclosure to the flat seventh. And you can play around with, um, you know, different notes on the weak beats, like I mentioned in the last video. Um, doesn't really matter too much what's on the weak beat, so, you know, doing things like flat nine to the root. A different way of resolving maybe the um, sharp nine would be like which would be using an enclosure to the fourth, resolving the fourth to the third and then going down the scale. You really have a lot of options uh, for resolving those notes but also you can apply some of those things to um, just notes that are inside of the scale if you kind of want to use them as like a jumping off point for a piece of vocabulary. Um, but we'll get a little bit more into that later. So um, within the scale you have uh, arpeggios and I think that this is probably the coolest thing about the dominant bebop scale. So you have off the root third, fifth, and uh, the flat seven. Off the root you have G7, B minor seven flat five off the third, D minor seven off the fifth, and F major seven off the flat seventh. And those also tell you what other chords you can use the scale over. So if you have a B minor 7 flat 5, you can play dominant bebop stuff. Same thing with F major 7, um, sharp 11. And, you know, playing the dominant bebop scale over those chords basically allows you to get like the modal characteristic of um, whatever that chord is. So uh, G mixolydian, B uh, locrian, D dorian, and F lydian. I'll even apply that to like modal tunes like inner urge, for example. changes in that tune. Uh, F sharp minor 7 flat 5, I used the related dominant bebop scale, which is D dominant bebop. F major 7 uh, sharp 11, I used G dominant bebop. E flat major 7, I used F dominant bebop. D flat major 7, I used E flat dominant bebop. Uh, and then kind of the same thing over the B section. So E, 
Um, I either use uh, F sharp dominant bebop or E major bebop. Um, C sharp major seven. I use uh, E flat dominant bebop. D major seven. I'll use uh, either the major bebop off that chord or E dominant bebop. B major seven. I'll use B major bebop or C sharp dominant bebop. B flat seven sharp eleven. I'll use B flat dominant bebop, and then G major seven, um, G major bebop, or A dominant bebop. Um, and you know, it doesn't have to all be like bebop scale stuff. Like you can kind of combine it with the more um, straightforward, like modal approach to get some sort of like intervallic stuff in there as well. Um, that can be fun. So maybe something like. Um, <laughs> kind of the idea um and then the um phrygian dominant bebop scale so um that one has fewer applications but i'll do it off of e um, so this is basically a dominant scale with a flat nine and a flat 13 instead of a natural nine and a uh, natural 13 and you also add a major seventh to it so from e it'll sound like this Chord tones, which are going to be the root, third, fifth, and flat seventh. Non chord tones will be the flat nine, the fourth, and the flat thirteen, the flat six, and then uh, non scale tones will be every other note. So natural nine, sharp nine, flat five, natural six, and natural seven. Um, and I won't go through those because um, it's kind of the same idea as the dominant and the major bebop, just using enclosures and chromatic approaches to resolve those notes uh, when you fall on strong beats with them. But um, within that scale, uh, your arpeggios are all diminished. So off the flat nine, uh, F diminished seven, and then the inversions of that. So A flat diminished seven, B diminished seven, and then D diminished seven. And you can kind of create simple uh, arpeggio to scale um, lines like we did with the major bebop scale. So arpeggio ascending and then trying to go down the scale from there. So. You know, mixing and matching things in different ways. Um, like, you know, landing on non-scale tones or non-chord tones when they're available, um, just to kind of spice things up a little bit. Um, so maybe next time I'll dive a little bit deeper into, um, you know, analyzing some phrases and trying to put those in the context of the bebop scale, um, like I did with the major bebop scale video, but um, figured this would be a good place to start. So hope to see you next time, or not. <laughs>